we don't have light uh, anymore. I don't know why. Maybe it's the here. That's a little bit oh, better. Maybe it's the, mm -hmm. the, um, the 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 atmosphere which is uh, a bit dark because we are in Turin, uh -huh. which is a very dark city in Italy. Turin is the, the, the city. The city. This is a clockwork orange. Uh, oh my gosh! Way. Okay. Oh. That's, that's that's serious fandom there. That yes. is serious. Yes, serious <laughs> fandom. That's a good demand. Hello, Julian Davis. Hello. <laughs> I am uh, Marco Saracco, eh, anarchico, ribelle. Eh. <laughs> Sono onoratissimo di averla qui in diretta da Los Angeles. Non capita tutti i giorni di interagire con personaggi di questo livello artistico. Stop. Uh, he is a rebel, he's a rebel, and he's very honored to have you uh, now uh, on air by Los Angeles. Uh, and uh, it, does not, it does not happen frequently to him to, to manage with people like you, of a, and, uh, people of a high artistic and technical level like you. Oh, thank you. So he's very ple pleased to be Uh, to, to have this davvero, eh, veramente, 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 okay. veramente. Okay. di cuore, di cuore. E noi se pensiamo a Stanley Kubrick, noi del canale The Crazy Marco 78, ma è una cosa che pensiamo in molti anche in Italia, consideriamo Kubrick senza ombra di dubbio il più grande regista di tutti i tempi uh, e riteniamo... Aspetta, se... aspetta un attimo, we in Italy, in Italy, Italian people consider Stanley Kubrick like the most, uh, the, the great, the greatest uh -oh. director of all times, ok, the greatest movie directors of all times. Esiste secondo okay. noi, parlando anche con Stefano, un filo rosso che unisce tutta la produzione filmica di Stanley Kubrick sotto il segno di una critica feroce al potere. He thinks there's, there's something hidden, uh, like a fil rouge in the Stanley Kubrick's uh, body of work, uh, that keeps some continuity in, uh, in a criticism against the, the, the great powers that rule this world. I, I'll agree with that. I agree mm. with that. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the one thing that I would say... Also, with, uh, with Stanley, is that, um, yes, he is. I mean, you, you believe he's the greatest director this world's ever seen. I mean, uh, you know, I, I can't attest to that. I haven't seen everything that's ever been filmed. However, I will say he is absolutely one of the smartest directors. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, world. absolutely. Yeah, very, absolutely. very, very smart man. Yes. And um, the way he tells stories, there's a lot hidden in his stories. I believe there's levels of things that are hidden, um, not just one thing. I mean, in fact, that's what's so fascinating about all of his films is that, mm -hmm. you know, not, uh, you know, people talk about Eyes Wide Shut, especially now because of its correlation between what is actually literally happening in the world today as we speak and the mm -hmm. powers and how they are taking control and what they do behind the scenes. But um, it also, it, it runs through um, so many different layers um, about uh, society, relationships, um, power struggles, um, sexuality, and those run through, again, like, you know, you've got that tattoo of a clockwork orange, that too, um, and how... Um, how the propaganda mm -hmm. that people are being fed is brainwashing the masses to accept the, um, the freedoms that are being taken away from them. And they don't see That's it. That's right. There's a lot, right. a lot of people that don't see it. And the thing is, is that if you were to, if, if you were a director with maybe um, less intelligence, you would want to try and say that in a more obvious way. But Stanley knows that if you go against that, if you, if you were to go up against that, that beast, mm -hmm. um, you would get knocked down. So it's a way of 
communicating those things to people who are willing to look for those things. If, mm -hmm. if you're not willing to look for those things, you can take um, Stanley's films at face value. And in fact, some people do. I mean, some people look at Eyes Wide Shut and say, eh, it's not that great. You know, mm. oh, it's too long. And, you know, what's the big deal? You know, Nicole didn't cheat on, Nicole's character didn't actually cheat on Tom's character. And, you know, and they just look at that. They don't look at all the different layers underneath. Okay. Volevo dire poi un'altra cosa importante. Eh, Eyes Wide Shut è la punta di diamante di questo discorso, arriva alla fine di questo discorso che accompagna tutta la filmografia di Kubrick e quindi il personaggio di Amanda, interpretato magnificamente da, da lei, eh, arriva proprio in un momento quindi, eh, fondamentale all'interno di questo discorso e io voglio quindi capire che cosa rappresenta il personaggio interpretato di Amanda. First, I think that Amanda um, or Mandy is um, a victim of, of circumstance in the respect of, um, if you look at our whole society, wait, let me correct that. If you look at Western civilization, mm -hmm. okay, just the West, um, Mandy and her life is indicative of the demoralization of the West. Okay. So here's a woman who, um, you know, was told that she could be empowered by her femininity or her beauty. Mm -hmm. And the West took that and enticed her and then destroyed it. And she was a victim of that. She was yes. like the lamb led to the slaughter. Yes, right? I understand. So you can see that on a wider sense. If you look at it on a, on, a, on a much wider sense, Mandy is indicative of so many people in the West that we are all, in a sense, lambs led to this slaughter. We are all, in a sense, we have all been demoralized by the mm. powers that be and the culture Um, the, the, the culture of our society and how it's evolved over the last several decades have served to demoralize us. And so what do we do? You know, um, a woman will take advantage of her beauty initially thinking, mm -hmm. oh, I'm going to get ahead, right? Because if you, I'm sure you guys have dissected the film, there's a bit where, you know, she was a former beauty queen. So she thought, okay, I'm going to get ahead by being this beauty queen. And maybe she had some experiences where she was used and abused. She started doing drugs. She realized that she could make more money being an escort. And, you know, the, the downhill road ensued. And you could see that in a number of different areas, you know, not with just women, but I'm saying people in our society over decades being demoralized where, you know, we are not... Um, we don't have the same um, moral fiber or moral constitution that we used to have. And we've been victim to the propaganda that the powers that be want us to be victim to. So they want us to take in that propaganda and live our lives according to that propaganda instead of us rejecting that propaganda. Mm -hmm. Okay, 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 understood, understood. Thank you, okay. thank you. you Very you understand clever. Sorry, I'm being, what, you asked a complicated question, I gave a complicated answer. <laughs> yes, uh, forgive us for complicated questions, but una, we are no, complicated. It, una curiosità, la, la scena, la scena dell'orgia. Wait, this is the problem today, is that there's not enough people in the world that think, mm. that really mm. think, they think outside the box, or they they are, you know, um, they're given a, an issue or a problem and they see things only one level at face value. And you have to think and you need to see all the different levels and all the different layers and weigh up what is really going on here, you know. Mm -hmm. Another curiosity is... La famosa scena dell'orgia si vocifera che sia stata tagliata di 25 minuti. E questa è una cosa abbastanza insolita perché... 
Stanley Kubrick è famoso, era famoso soprattutto per il suo potere contrattuale davanti alle case di produzione, in questo caso di fronte alla Warner Bros., che però pare che invece in questo caso gli abbia imposto il taglio di 25 minuti. Ma cosa, no, cosa è successo veramente? Come sai, io personalmente non ero in quelle orgie. Non ho partecipato in quelle orgie. Ero in quella scena iniziale, dove eravamo tutti in un circolo, ma poi le altre scene dove tutta l'azione tra i coppoli era in corso e le orgie e le cose. Ero in quella scena. Right. I mean, that was at a different, a completely different set. You know, mm -hmm. the, the initial part of, you know, Tom coming into the mansion and, you know, uh, Nick Nightingale at the keyboard, at the piano with, you know, the girls in the circle, all of that, that was one set. And then when it switched to all the orgy scenes, that was a completely different house. It was not the same house. Um, however, I will say that I know some of the models that were there in those orgy scenes. Mm -hmm. If there was something that was really bizarrely untoward that was said or done during those scenes, I would have heard about it. So, I mean, I know you want to hear that there was something really dangerous that was said in these scenes that was cut, but um, this is just my opinion, okay? Mm -hmm. My opinion is, that Warner Brothers probably felt that the salaciousness of the orgy scenes might have gone on too long and wanted to cut some of it. I don't know that there was anything really, quote, dangerous, unquote, mm. about um, what was said in those scenes. Because also, we have to think about, let's pull back again and look at who Stanley was and mm. how he communicated his ideas to his viewers, right? Mm -hmm. Stanley never directly communicated those ideas to his viewers. Um, it was always okay. cloaked in something. So what I'm saying is that um, regardless if those 24 minutes were cut, um, my take would be this. If it was something really weird or strange or dangerous that other models heard or saw or that other people said, i would have heard about it. And so the thing that was um, uncomfortable and the thing that a lot of these models talked about afterwards because they were models and not, you know, soft porn stars, they weren't, you know, porn stars, they were fashion models, is that some of them were very upset, um, mm -hmm. you know, in these scenes. It just really affected their, their spirit to actually do these scenes. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I think there was one bit you probably remember where there's a girl lying on a couch and there's a guy just like ramming into her. Um, and um, some of the other girls were telling me that underneath her mask, she was crying. Mm -hmm. So there was some really uh, intense scenes in, in respect to the whole orgy action that was upsetting for some of the girls. Now. And, and I would have been upset. This is why I just declined to be a part of it because I didn't see the point. Yes. He just needed a body, you know, and, and I said to you before that Stanley asked me to be a part of it. He goes, you don't even have to be Mandy. I just, he goes, you've got the best body here. He goes, I want you to be in it, to be one of the girls in it. And I, and I, I just said, I'm, I'm sorry, you know, I'm not comfortable doing that. Mm -hmm. I don't really see the point in it. So I, I'm not doing it. And obviously Stanley was pissed off at me turning it down. But anyway, I digress. Ok, other question? Sì, se esiste no. a questo punto nella, nella realtà un potere come quello descritto okay. nel, nella scena dell'orgia, quindi un potere, di, un potere This... di intoccabili, di una casta di intoccabili mm. al di sopra di mm. una legge che regge il mondo. Yes, I do. I absolutely do. Yes. No question in my mind. No question. And a great, in fact, a great now more than power. ever before, now more than ever before, that power has just increased its power many, many times. Um, mm -hmm. That power is in full control in America right now. And um, the world is going through a massive reset because we are heading for global communism. Mm -hmm. Now, the people... Um, 
in charge mm -hmm. will not be communist. The people in charge will have all the money in the world, all the power in the world, and there won't be anybody to stop them. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, absolutely, there is a cabal. They have been active for a century. Um, a lot of it, I mean, it started to manifest itself in the West with the Frankfurt School that came over here um, in the 1920s. Um, and the, the people of the Frankfurt School and the people who funded the Frankfurt School um, were all communists. Um, mm. And that has, it's been a very, very long, slow game um, that a lot of people in the West didn't see. And all of that, we are now in the final stages of that fully realizing itself. Mm. That's the truth. I think that right now is a very, very dark time. Mm. Very dark. Yeah. We are and all in the in the devil devil's hands. We are. Yeah. We are all I, in the I devil I, hands. I, I, I Yes. I mean, and there's a lot of different ways that you can see that manifesting. Um, I mean, even recently, um, Joe Biden um, said something saying, oh, uh, Republicans are sucking the blood from children. Now, he's yes. not mentally with it. Now, why would he say something like that? Why would that be in his brain? Because, see, he's got such dementia that he doesn't have full control over his cognitive abilities and then he'll just blurt things out that are fresh in his mind. So why would that be fresh in his mind? Now some people would say that all of these things I'm talking about is just pure conspiracy theory um, and it's meaningless and it's just a bunch of uh, you know idiots trying to think up these dark weird ideas. But you look you look at history and you look at the different things that have been going on um, you look at the, the slow, long trajectory of this takeover of the world. Mm -hmm. And you know what I just heard? I just heard recently there is something in America um, that the Democrats, where I gotta find this. There's a, a thing that the Democrats are trying to do right now. They're trying to pass a law. Where is it? To pass? They're trying to pass a law um, where mm. is it? Oh yeah, here we go. Listen to this. This this is just happening in, in the States right now. The Democrats are pushing a new law, S3571. Mm -hmm. It calls for the end of the US dollar and the mm -hmm. introduction of a central bank digital mm -hmm. currency. Digital currency. Yes. Now, if you have any understanding of what that means, you know, you can look at it in a Satanistic aspect, like, oh, okay, you know, we all have to have our, our hand stamp with the number of the beast and all that. You can look at it that six, way. Six, six, you can also, right. But you can also look at it in the respect that if it's, they can just switch people off just like that, if you don't comply. And that's what they've been building towards for a very, very long time with the propaganda that they've been using um, on the public. And let's face it, a lot of the public believe this, not just in our country, but in the West, in Italy, everywhere, right? A lot of people believe the propaganda. They think it's great. They think it's fabulous. Oh, great, we won't have cash anymore. We can just, you know, use our hand to buy things, right? Mm -hmm. But they don't think. They don't think about the, the, uh, the deeper meaning of, of what is going on here. That is total control. That is totalitarianism in the worst kind of way. And the people at the top, the people in power are exempt. Thank you, Julianne. It's a great pleasure to know a woman so beautiful, intelligent, courageous. And then I wanted to salute Manu, our third guest. Hi, salute. Hi. This is another assistant of us and he's very pleased uh, pleased to have know so much uh, beautiful and smart uh, woman like you my friend uh, um, thank you. Thank also you me much. and uh, it's, it's always a great uh, pleasure to talk to you about these topics 
uh, we want to um, make you the, the best wishes uh, mm. for your career in the movies. Uh, I saw you are uh, filming, uh, you have a filming production now, which is yes, uh, your fact, frequency. I have, I have new news on that. So the name of the film is called Fear Frequency. Fear Frequency. And I think you can look it up, fearfrequencymovie.com. I think that's what it is. Mm -hmm. um, and the trailer is on there. Um, and we've just gotten just dis distribution. So we will be, um, I think we're doing a limited theater release. I don't know if we're doing international theater. I think just, you know, national theater for now. And then we're going to be on streaming. So, um, yeah. Netflix, so for example. Excited or Amazon. Yeah. Okay. okay, thank you, Julian. I, I will um, make you informed about the, our editing of some of your declarations for this okay. interview. And when we will put it okay. on YouTube, uh, we will advise you, okay? Thank you okay. again for thank your you. availability, you, your kindness, nice you and nice uh, greetings from Italy. Baci da Torino. <laughs> Bye. Keep, bye, keep, thank oh, you. Bye. Thank keep you. Bye bye. Thanks. Freedom. Seriously, fight for freedom.